Okay, so you guys know I love party tricks. This one, not really a party trick, more so an Easter egg. So let's put this in drive, kind of like you would see in a, in, a, in a video game. Put it over in sport, press and hold it forward, paddle twice back, and then you get a flashing S. That means we're in sport plus mode. And what does that mean? Let's put our foot into it. And what happens is we have gone into this kind of an Easter egg mode keeping the engine above 4,000 RPM. Now, there's a reason why it does this. I explained the technical reason in the, in the tech review, but really what's happening here is this. The engine is down two cylinders. And I'll admit, I was, I, I like the new Volvo engine philosophy of all four cylinder, but the reality is when you've got a performance car, I want more power. I want bragging rights of a bigger engine. But this is more a suite of technologies. It's the engine that's changed, and then all of a sudden they put a bigger turbo. So you got the supercharger for up to 3,250 RPM. Turbocharger comes in at 3,250, but get this, no cap up to 7,200, which is the max engine speed. And basically it'll come in whenever you need load, like coming out of a declining radius turn like this. But wait. There's more. The Sport Plus mode then changes the transmission mapping so it keeps the engine, the smaller two liter engine, in a perfect like area where it needs to be to basically go into S2000 mode. So remember driving the old S2000 where to get any kind of power or dynamics out of it, you really needed to thrash it, like put our foot into it. That's what Sport Plus mode does, and then all of a sudden makes this thing deliver real power. Get it? I'm gonna say it. What the hell is a Polestar? Well, I had to go back to 1985 to piece together the story. Do you remember the 240 series Volvo when Volvos looked like bricks? Well, they used to race those and they called them the flying bricks. Well, in 1985, they won the DTM championship. Then fast forward to 1995. Remember the 850 series Volvos still kind of look like a brick, switched to front wheel drive, but a little bit sleeker. Well, that was the first official Polestar. Then fast forward to 2009, and that's when things started to take shape to what they are today. Remember the C30 Volvo? Well, they campaigned something called the S2000, not a Honda, a Volvo. It kind of was that color. Uh, and that won the STCC series. Then fast forward to 2015, and Volvo's scratching their head, and they're like, well, Mercedes, they have AMGs, and BMWs, they have Ms. We need something. Well, these guys with these funky looking color cars, why don't we just go buy them? So in July of 2015, Volvo took Polestar in-house, and then I think they were 15 employees in total. Now, a year and a half later, uh, they're 100 employees. And then in 2016, they won the World uh, Touring Championship in a car similar to this. Sadly, not a station wagon, but they still won in an odd looking color Volvo. Okay, so driving dynamics. First thing we gotta know here is what we're driving on, not so much what we're driving in. Uh, you guys know I'm a proud Arizona State Sun Devil. Go Devils! This is not Arizona State, but it is Arizona Motorsports Park. It is a 2.24 circuit with 16 turns. Very technical. So you can imagine getting on this thing with a Volvo that has effectively a front-wheel drive platform uh, yes, 50% of the power goes to the back. As we talked about in the tech review, how does it work out here? Well, I gotta tell you, this is an interesting conundrum. It's an old platform. I've been very honest with you guys in the past when we drove the XC60. A, a nice car, but this is a 12-year-old platform. The Polestar engineers have gone through and they've went and changed so much. So here we are in a declining radius turn. Remember all the stuff we went through? It's like a laundry list in the tech review. Go back to that episode and check it out. But effectively what they've done is they've taken this older platform, significantly updated it by making these small but very focused changes. So in the tech review I told you this is fitted with Olin's adjustable dampers. However, there is a catch. 
So you and I have driven many of these fancy tuned European sedans that have adjustable dampers, but usually uh, we hit a button on the dash and it goes from celery mode to you no longer have intestines mode. Here, old school doesn't really cover it. Uh, now a hint vice before we get into this, this is not something you're going to do every day. You see, you gotta get your ass out of the car, get down here, ideally you'd have a rack, um, and then there is a knob underneath the damper in the front here, and you have to adjust it. Then go to the other side, do the same thing there, but you're not done. You gotta get to the back, pull out all this stuff in the back here, basically the floorboard here, and then the carpeting here, and then there's a knob back here, and this one's fancier because it's got like a gold finish. And you can set it to one of 30 different positions. So yeah, it may not be a button on the dash, but there's far more adjustability, and that's how you make it stiff or less stiff. Kind of takes me back to my old like Supra Tokiko three-way shocks days. Okay, so now that we've adjusted those dampers, how does it work here? Well, there's some great high-speed stability. Look at this, I'm coming in, brake, 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 brake. Let's get into stir the plane of motion here. Notice, it doesn't really do much, but it does work. Net, net, what do all those changes add up to? Well, this is a 12-year-old platform that now is somewhat balanced. Now, you do feel a couple of things that kind of stand out from you. Like, for example, we're going around a turn here, and because it's an all-wheel drive system that's been retuned, to get 50% of the power to the back and then lock the differential so it's even front and back. It's not a full on like BMW or Mercedes AMG going around a track, but you're like, you know what? They've kind of hidden the front wheel drive bias and they've kind of hidden the limitations of the platform. For some reason, I feel compelled to point out the obvious here. You and I are driving what my rocket scientist father used to term a pig fare car on a racetrack, a station wagon on a racetrack, something you and I not only don't do every day, we've never done it before. So if you were thinking that there would be a weight disadvantage, you would be correct. Uh, the sedan is 3,860 pounds. The wagon is 3,960 pounds. In my eyes, 100 pounds is a very small price to pay to have the bragging rights of taking a station wagon on a racetrack. Uh, now there is one other piece of information. We talked about the history of Polestar, and those cars used to be built in like a shed somewhere in like rural Sweden. Uh, but then now the, the wagon, which is built in Sweden, and the sedan, which is built in Belgium, uh, the Polestars go down 90% of the serial production line. Then they're finished in that proverbial shed somewhere in Sweden. Okay, so the track is certainly fun, but let's uh, dial it back a couple of notches and check out what Arizona really has to offer. This is one of the back roads between Sedona and Prescott, a uh, stunning place. Really don't want to speed because the local constable will definitely get you. So let's put our foot into it a little bit, and you can feel the older platform. Now, do you remember that C63 AMG that we drove on Circuito Escati as well as some of the roads around uh, southern Spain, that had this like direct connected to the to the road feel about it. Granted, that was designed 12 years newer than this platform, so you can tell the difference. But even when like put a foot into it, let's go around this turn a bit more. Now all the changes come together. Like for example, this grate we're going over. It's the tires, it's the dampers, and some of the other changes they've made. It comes together to make the whole thing more balanced, but also make it feel like it's more than the sum of its parts. Two pieces of information I have not shared with you in the tech review and now this full first drive review. Number one, yes, we are shooting at a racetrack, but I did not share that the racetrack borders a military base, and the entire time that we've been driving here and shooting here, they've been doing touch and goes not with your everyday run of the mill F-22, but with an F-35 Raptor, six of them to be exact. Okay, back to Volvos. So one other piece of information I didn't share with you, the wagon outsells the sedan Polestar two to one. And with that, what do we got? I would say this is more a vision of what is to come rather than the be all and end all of the touring car world from Europe. And that's really a function of the age of the platform, but it's the age of the platform and what the Polestar engineers did to make this 
an incredibly well-balanced touring car, which makes one think if they started with a much newer platform, like the scalable product architecture that's in the XC90 and the V90 and the S90 that you and I have driven, imagine what that tuning would do to the modernity of a more robust platform. So, with that, I'm gonna turn this around to you guys. We've already driven the XC90, both T6 and T8. We've driven the S90 as well as the V90. Now, which one of those would be the Polestar that you would want the most? And don't just tell me which one, but why you want that version of a Polestar. For me, it would definitely be a V90. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy updated application, which you can get for free at Apple iTunes or Google Play. And oh, by the way, click subscribe and notifications on YouTube. And number two, a fun fact. So I know there was a lot of internet rumors about what that color is called. Uh, my favorite was Swedish Racing Green, but it's not Swedish Racing Green. It's technically called Rebel Blue, but it's gonna change next year to Scion Racing Blue, which is the Polestar Racing Team. Until I see you next time, bis später.